and I would like to introduce to you Sarah Salatin Thiel. Sarah is a social worker and uh, by training and works in a high school in Troy, New York. Um, she's also the principal of the Jewish Community Religious School at Congregation Berit Shalom, um, where she's been for the last 13 years or so. And Sarah was first a teacher and now the principal of that program. Um, and she also runs a, her own clinical practice um, working with adolescents. So Sarah is going to share with us a little bit about a uh, work that she's done with her teens and then a school-wide program. So take it away, Sarah. Thank you, Etta. Thank you, everybody, um, for hanging in. And I am conscious of the time, so I promise I'll be super quick. Um, <clears throat> I, um, as Etta said, I work, when, when I went to the Institute for Educators back in 2011, I actually went as a teacher, um, teaching seventh graders and doing some work with high schoolers also. And um, lo and behold, between the Institute and uh, ending and the school year starting, um, I became the principal of the school. So um, I had to really quickly change how I thought I wanted to use um, this curriculum, which I was really enamored with and, and thought would be great um, in my congregation. Um, so our school is a community supplemental school. Um, there are four synagogues in um, our county in upstate New York. And one is conservative, one is unaffiliated, one is reform, and one is orthodox. And anybody um, from any one of those four synagogues is allowed to send their child to our supplemental school, um, just to give you an idea. And 98% of our students come from the reform um, synagogue. I would say, and um, we are, do tend to be pretty liberal and social action-y oriented. Um, so just to give you an idea of our setting, I, I decided to do some school-wide programming and um, I wasn't sure how this was going to fly because we have students um, aged as young as four and we have students all the way up to 18-year-olds. 18 year 18 so what I decided to do is break the programming into four groups um, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about that and you can see, you know, I basically had a little kids group, an intermediate age group, and then the sixth and seventh graders combined. And then the Madrachim um, I used as facilitators. So I trained them ahead of time and Etta, Etta you can go on to the next slide. <clears throat> and they have been, the Madrachim are teenage helpers um, who are grades 9th through 12. Um, had been using the JWA curriculum, the civil rights curriculum in particular, um, working on some of these core issues that you see, identity, power and privilege, clarifying their own values, um, et cetera, et cetera, and really with the focus being on um, using primary sources in their work. And what I decided to do as the new principal <laughs> was schedule three school-wide programs. Um, using the Living the Legacy curriculum. One to coincide with the Martin Luther King holiday, um, a second in February to coincide with Black History Month, um, and actually Troy, New York plays an interesting role in um, African American history in general in the United States. So we have a lot of personal connection to that. It's something that we talk about a lot and it's part of our culture. And then in March um, to celebrate Women's History Month. So what I'm going to, um, tell you a little bit about is just an excerpt from um, the first session, the school-wide session that I did on that coincided with the Martin Luther King holiday. Um, and I put down in very small script that we should, that we, we continued to revisit a lot of these themes and um, revisited a lot of the facts once we started celebrating Passover and getting ready for Pesach um, because it just really hit home for us. So I also, um, decided that since I was working with kids who were very, very young, um, that a little supplemental material would be helpful. And I found this fantastic book by Richard Michelson. If you're not familiar with his work, he's, he does some really, really great stuff. Um, this book, As Good As Anybody, that tells about the parallel history of Martin Luther King. Um, and it, it's just a really, and, and um, Rabbi Heschel as well. So. Um, it's a fantastic book, and I use some other supplemental um, material for the other two sessions I did, and if anybody is interested in those, I'd be happy to pass the name of those two books along as well. So 
Um, essentially, in a very abbreviated version of what we did was um, we showed the little kids, we showed everybody pictures from the JWA Civil Rights Curriculum and asked them to discuss using the Madrachim as facilitators, how would you feel if the rule said you couldn't do something that you wanted to do because of your skin color, or your hair color, or your eye color, and had them maybe for the first time think about that. Um, and then ask them to think about what would you want to, would you want to change the, those rules and how would you go about doing that. And we asked the, um, the intermediate age kids to do kind of the same thing, the same exercise, look at the pictures using the primary sources, but that we tweaked the questions by asking them how they would want to make that change, what their ideas were, because we thought they might come up with some really creative ideas. And finally, for the sixth and seventh graders, we showed them the same pictures, but we asked them to be a little more thoughtful and talk more about, and think about, you know, what their obligation as Jews um, is. Um, would they put themselves in danger? Would that, does that something that they feel that they are um, sort of destined to do as Jews? And, and why or why not, they, why, are they, why or why they would not feel that, that way? Um, and what followed, was um, some really interesting discussion. <clears throat> and then each group, again, facilitated and led by the Madrachim, the teenagers who had been working on this, these things, um, each presented back to the entire school. Um, and they were all shown pictures of women from the JWA curriculum who did this work. And as, as I said, it was all led by those teenagers who had been using this material throughout the year. And I'm going to show you um, on the next couple of slides um, some pictures of some of our kids in action. Um, I can tell you in one of my other roles as mother <laughs> that this is something that stuck with um, our kids because my daughter is one of the children that's in one of the pictures. And she's, she was four at the time we did this. And um, she talks about it even now all the time. And she particularly likes to sing the Paul Robeson version of Let My People Go, which we played um, during our Passover programming. Um, so, and so you can move on to the next slide, <clears throat> which is a picture of, you can see, our, those are our sixth and seventh graders being led by our Madrachim um, in some conversation. Um, and so what I will leave you with is just you know, asking you if you're interested in this model, how might it work in your school, in your synagogue, or how might it look different, or how might it be similar? Great, thank you, Sarah. Um, did, um, you're I'd be happy to hear if anyone has questions for Sarah or any thoughts about uh, um, sort of what is in your mind having heard about the work of these teachers um, and knowing that we're almost to the end of this school year, uh, look, we're, yes, educators, we're already looking forward to next year. So um, if anyone has anything they want to share at this point, we'd be happy to hear your voice. Well, I just have to say to Marilyn, I want to thank you. I love that you tied in all the age groups in, in their own way and yet brought them together. Because I think that's also a way to keep kids coming back which in a supplementary school is really hard and to engage them. And so I, I really, you know, call it a load. This is really great. Thank you. Thank you. I would also add that um, we have not created as many resources for elementary school students. Um, before I came to JWA, I was an early childhood educator. We certainly don't have anything that I would classify as early childhood material on our site yet. Um, and part of that is because a lot of the work that we do is text heavy and using um, you know, text-based primary sources. But Sarah did a really interesting thing in using photographs and contextualizing that with other material that she found. Um, and also her high school students who are perfectly capable of reading some of the documents in the curriculum, having sort of deeper, uh, more critical conversation, um, were able to use the material that we've prepared. And then Sarah could maximize what her high schoolers had learned by having them lead the conversations and the programs for the younger students. So I think that's a really interesting model to think about. Um, and for those of you who are maybe working with younger students, I'm always happy to um, talk to you one-on-one -on -one and help you figure out how to adapt this material or find um, more 
supplementary materials to bring in.